Hi everybody, we're on the line here with Rack of Rack Attack Gamer YouTube channel. And what we're talking about tonight is Biden's recent appearance right outside of his boyhood home of Scranton. And uh, here's the take uh, on network news, uh, CNN in particular, how they describe that drive-in town hall meeting with Joe Biden. This, I, I, I really do view this campaign as a campaign between Scranton and, and, and Park Avenue. And I really mean it. Because, you know, the way we were raised up here in this area, awful lot of hard work and people bust the neck. All they ask for is a shot, just a shot. All that Trump can see from Park Avenue is Wall Street. All he thinks about is the stock market and tell him, we're going to do all right. Everybody owns stock. How many of you all own stock in Scranton? In my neighborhood in Scranton, not a whole, hell, a whole lot of people own stock. <laughs> you know? All right. Now, the problem with that is that his hometown of Scranton, a lot of people can't afford to own stock because all the jobs have gone away courtesy of the Biden-Obama administration and also the Bush Jr. administration and the Clinton administration. So the jobs have disappeared and during the Biden uh, regime with Obama, they did nothing to stop the outflow of jobs to China. In fact, he talked about how China would be uh, great for the U.S. economy. So that's the problem here. Now, another problem is that uh, you would think that in Biden making an appearance right outside of his boyhood home of Scranton, it was in uh, <clears throat> Musick, which is Montage Mountain, which is a ski and recreation area. It was a drive-in type of scene. His, his supporters were in their cars listening to him. But along the road leading the way to the mountain, we'll see how many actual Biden supporters there were. Let's roll that tape. So what I w wanted to show you before is what it looks like when Joe Biden comes into town. So here are the Joe Biden, here are the Biden supporters right here. Okay. Let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 at this end and maybe I'm guessing about 30 at the other end. So those are your Biden supporters. Now, let me turn this and let you see what we have starting, well, that's my car, so we'll say starting right there and working your way down where you start seeing the American flags. That's, that's how you know that you're getting into the, the Trump country. Let me run across the street here and let you see what it looks like at this uh, I'm showing how many Biden supporters compared to how many Trump supporters. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I counted about 19, 20. Yeah, I, there's, there's about 30 of them up there, maybe. Uh, yes, yeah, I remember seeing you at the Pence thing. Yep, good. You too, good to see you again. So once you get away from the, the maybe a dozen Biden supporters, so this is where Biden's going to be coming in. They got the helicopters coming in right now overhead. All right, we're just doing a Facebook Live here. I like your flag. What's going on? How are you? How are you? Good, right. good, good. good. <clears throat> we'll put that uh, roll of tape in the background. Now, these tapes, the videos were made by Biden supporters, who obviously have a bias for, uh, for Trump. Uh, they were made by Trump supporters. Uh, however, you know, it clearly shows how much of a turnout there was among Trump supporters right outside of Scranton. Now, what does that say about the viability of Biden's support? Uh, Rack, what do you think? Well, thanks for having me, Larry. Uh, you know my take on uh, my political leanings. Uh, I'm pro-Trump and I'm uh, totally against Biden. Uh, what I think it comes down to is that uh, there's a lot of people that I've noticed that are pro-Trump, whenever I see polls on Twitter of people asking if uh, the vote was held today, who would you vote for? Would you vote for Trump or would you vote for Biden? The polls are almost exclusively 97% pro-Trump. Now, I will admit that Twitter has a lot of echo chambers and I might be getting the, uh, the fallout of the echo chamber. Yeah, a lot, but, of the mainstream, uh, a lot of the mainstream polls are showing Biden still ahead, even though it's closing. Uh, but, you know, we know from 2016, the polls were inaccurately reflecting a hidden vote, which I think is also developed this year uh, for a number of reasons, including 
the rioting of the past several months where people say, you know, this has gone too far and Biden and the others have been standing down on it, wanting to defund the police or reimagine the police. And, uh, you know, you could see these people here, you know, they're, they're not about to stand for a breakdown of what they see, a breakdown of, of law and order. So, you know, I, I just find this a very compelling uh, analysis uh, or indication of how shallow Biden's support is. Now, this is right outside his boyhood home of Scranton, which he touts often about being for the working class and all that. And yet, look at this kind of turnout for Trump. So, you know, to me, that indicates that uh, the polls may be way off again this year. And, uh, you know, how, how viable is Biden now as a candidate? What do you think? Well, I think the entire times have changed ever since the Internet and social media, especially. Uh, many people don't get their news anymore from the regular mainstream media news. Uh, I, I'm in one particular that doesn't get it from mainstream media. I get it from the Internet. I get it from uh, various sources. And one of the major ones I get it from is Twitter. Twitter has been known to be breaking news. Uh, more quickly than any other news source. Uh, if you if something happens in the world that's uh, a large event, uh, within minutes at the most, it will be on Twitter. So however, a lot of. However, Rack, the problem is uh, you see that with the uh, internet and alternative news sites, the the violence, the rioting, the the looting, the arson, the the, the you know people being shot, uh, police officers being attacked and shot. However the main networks are not carrying much of that. They, you know, their mantra is it's mostly peaceful. So a lot of people I talk to who uh, are still on board with Biden say, well, you know, that, that's, it's largely peaceful. That's the impression they're getting from the mainstream media. So I don't know how this is going to play in the polls. You know, how many people realize the extent of the violence uh, and, and how deep it runs and, and how it's proliferating if they're if they're not watching the internet or fox which of course is showing it 24 7 because they're they're on board with uh, trump but at least they're they're getting those videos on so again i don't know how much awareness there is among uh, the, the vast majority of voters about you know whether they realize what's going on well, I'm sure that there's some that don't get their news from the Internet, that don't do what I do. Uh, but see, considering when the Internet started, uh, you would figure from the age of maybe 45, even maybe up to 50 or a little bit above, you're going to get those people and below that will have a, an alt, uh, maybe a supplemental source of news as being the Internet or social media. A lot of people are involved in social media now, and they do see these things. Well, you know, what I, what, I, what I also meant to say at the beginning was what we're showing here uh, was not reported by CNN, which hosted that drive-in town hall meeting with Biden. It, as far as I know, it wasn't shown uh, on the other networks either or as minimized. They didn't emphasize. I mean, to me, this is a compelling part of his appearance that the Trump supporters far outweighed Biden supporters right outside of his hometown, yet there is little, if any, mention of it on network news. Well, Larry, I think you kind of uh, hit the nail right on the head with what you just said, but maybe you haven't yourself even realized it. This kind of stuff isn't being reported by the mainstream media. I mean, the question that is sitting there, the elephant question in the room is why? Uh, so from my take, and we've worked with each other before, you know my stance. I have a very conspiratorial stance. Yeah. Uh, my opinion that the news is trying to drive the opinion of people. Instead of just presenting the news, they're actually trying to steer people in a certain uh, viewpoint of the world and how the world is. But uh, when you, we have this large swath of people that also watch main, uh, alternative news or uh, news that's presented on Twitter and, and alternative sites, they see the riots, they see the violence, they see the damage being done to the cities. They see all this other stuff, and they themselves also see that it's not being presented in the mainstream media news. Well, so apparently. they themselves are, are like scratching their heads and saying, you know, yeah. something's up here. Well, apparently, you know, it is getting through to some extent because, as we know, uh, uh, recently, uh, Biden and the others are changing their tune, and now they're talking at least to some extent about the violence and condemning it to some extent, which they didn't do before. And that's a result of 
them uh, of it showing up in the polls now is a negative for them because people are reacting negatively to all the rioting. So apparently some of that is getting through. But on election day, you know, it, I think it's still largely a matter of who turns out at the polls. Now, the Biden people and the identity political groups and, and all kinds of these special interest groups uh, are have gotten very much better uh, in recent years at getting people out to the polls. So that's going to help Biden, uh, as opposed to Trump. Now, we know his base will show up at the polls come hell or high water. But to counteract that, Biden's groups are going to be out much more in force, I think, than they were four years ago. So to me, it's still hard to tell who's going to who's going to prevail in this election. I would actually kind of agree with you on that. Uh, in in some respects, uh, they are definitely pulling out all the stops. They're doing the mail-in campaigns. They're pushing that very very hard. Pennsylvania just had the ruling. Now you can vote three days after the election. Uh, I mean, so they are definitely pulling out all the stops. And but again, with my conspiratorial nature, uh, they are also silencing a lot of conservative voices. They are trying to stop this information from being passed on on uh, online on social media. So where you see the riots on social media and you see the the destruction and stuff like that and anything like that, those are the voices they're trying to silence. They just want the mainstream media view pushed. So that the people watching mainstream TV don't even have a chance of uh, seeing the alternative news. All right, come uh, come election day, uh, and if there's no clear winner, uh, who, no matter who wins or who loses, what do you think is going to happen? I mean, it's going to be contested. Oh, it's definitely going to be contested. There's no question about it. Uh, Pelosi, Schumer, I mean, all of them are coming out and saying that it's going to be contested. Uh it's it's already been talked about. It's already been planned. Uh, uh, Pelosi is the one that actually started to talk to the military, saying, oh, are you going to help us out when uh, he doesn't concede? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you're, you know you're big on some of these conspiracy theories, and a lot of people are saying that, you know, this is the beginning of uh, a situation where it's going to be widespread uh, social um, disobedience and, and you know, rioting and, and a lot of violence, and therefore it's a step uh, towards uh, military control. Well, I can't see any outcome of it being without some sort of problems happening afterwards. Even if Trump wins, or I'm sorry, even if Biden wins, which I'm, I'm pretty sure Trump's going to win, but you never know. But if uh, Biden should win, you're going to have every Trump supporter saying to themselves, well, heck, we've seen these polls on Twitter, 97% for uh, Trump. How did this possibly happen? They themselves are going to be questioning it. So something is going to come from that uh, area also. We know that a lot of uh, the, the liberals, we know that a lot of uh, the, the left-leaning side has portions of it which uh, have rioted it and have a, a violent nature. We don't know what the outcome is going to be with the right side. Or do they themselves have that within them? Because they might. They might. They, they are at their limits, and they just might. Adding to the mix now is uh, the death of uh, Ginsburg, Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And uh, now there's going to be a big fight over whether there should be a confirmation uh, before the election. And uh, from what uh, we're seeing on some of the reports on the internet, there's plans already to, for widespread protest over that if the uh, Democrats hold it up or if the Republicans push it, both sides agitating over it. I've seen many posts by uh, the left-hand side saying, burn it down, do not accept it, we're going to cause all sorts of problems, we won't accept this. There is many posts that are issuing threats issuing vague and sometimes very uh, right on the point uh, threats and warnings that they're not going to accept uh, any appointments before the next president gets in. Yeah, I mean, this is such a, a volatile uh, and toxic mix now with the election uh, less than uh, two months away. It's, it's uh, unprecedented in a way. I mean, even in the 60s when you had uh, all the rioting, uh, and uh, the, the, the um, protest uh, against the war, you didn't have this kind of widespread 
violence and rioting spreading now outside of some of the city areas. You know, the attacks on the suburbs, people going in, disrupting people uh, eating in the restaurants. Uh, you know, it, it's taken on much more of a widespread uh, dimension now with, with these protests. And, uh, you know, there, there is a lot of push against it. So it's really kind of a dangerous uh, area that we're entering now. No doubt. Um, you know, if you look at there's certain charts that are available on the Internet about the, the divide between the left and right, that divide has been growing over the years to where now they're so separate, they're so different uh, that obviously we're talking about two camps. We're talking about yeah. the right and we're talking about the left and they are so separate anymore and so different. And the volatility, like you say, is way high. Uh, yeah, we're going to have uh, problems, I think, no matter what happens. Yeah, also, uh, I found it interesting, uh, just a few nights ago on CNN, uh, Newt Gingrich uh, had the audacity to mention George Soros uh, funding a lot of these progressive, radical uh, people that uh, achieve office as district, attor district attorneys, uh, prosecutors, et cetera, et cetera, who are standing down on the rioting, uh, turning them loose, not prosecuting them. And uh, he was cut off. Uh, they, they, they said, we needn't, we needn't mention uh, George Soros. Now, this was on Fox. Now, uh, Tucker Carlson has been mentioning George Soros, but these other anchors uh, wouldn't allow it to, to be explored, which I find quite interesting, especially on Fox, which is, you know, all uh, out for Trump. Well, I mean, that, that speaks for itself. What's going on here? I mean, you have a guy that's extremely rich and you have him setting aside and putting $17 million to try to sway things his way. We'll just say it that way, his way. And uh, that $17 million is going to go a long, long way. Well, I mean, it's a lot more than 17 when you consider all the organizations that he uh, is reportedly funding. Oh, I wouldn't doubt that at all. He's, he's got a whole bunch of different uh, uh, non-governmental organizations he can funnel money through. Uh, 17 to $18 million is what we know of. Yeah, I mean, he funded the campaigns of, of a lot of these uh, progressive, so-called progressive leaders now that are standing down on the, the rioting and the violence. Uh, you know, that, that's, that's a verifiable fact. Uh, so, but again, you know, it's another indication of how certain things are not discussed on mainstream media. Right, and uh, you saw their reaction just as well as I saw the reaction. It was a very strange interview. Uh, it took a very strange turn once yeah. the name uh, Soros was brought up. And, and well, what could you say? I mean, that yeah. itself is conspiratorial. I mean, there's something going on in the background there. And also, I know it was something that you're disturbed about is uh, how they are changing the algorithms uh, on the uh, social media sites where it's hard to find dissenting opinions and websites now. And some of them are being banned outright. And this is a uh, trend that's intensifying, which means more and more it's, it's, it's a certain narrative that is presented to the public even on the Internet now. So the information is being more and more controlled, which is, of course, the death of democracy. Well, that's absolutely true. And uh, I'm not going to mince words very much. Uh, that, that's exactly what's going on. Somebody somewhere is trying to control the narrative. And they are pulling out a lot of pretty much anything they can do to do that. They are banning people, many, many people. They're, they're, they're even shutting down people's um, means of funding. They're banning, uh, they're controlling the algorithms to where if you do a search on any topic that's related to anything with this whole subject, you're going to see what they want to push first instead of whatever might be out there. They are controlling basically all the information, and it's getting very bad. It's getting worse. So, what's the alternative? I mean, how, how you know what? What's the? Is there a solution to this? Well, I mean, the solution would be to, to stop what is doing this, but that in itself goes right to my conspiracies. You have to identify what is doing this. What what is the force behind this? And then that itself has to be stopped. I would imagine George Soros is a huge source behind this. Why the Justice Department hasn't checked into it, or why I haven't heard anything of, from the Justice Department checking into George Soros is beyond me. Because this approaches, if not is, sedition, or even uh, to the point of treason. 
Look at the passion of the people we've been seeing on the screen behind us. Uh, you know, and, and as I said, this is much deeper than what was going on in the 60s, where a lot of the protests were largely college kids. A lot of them were afraid of being drafted. Uh, but now here, you know, you see middle class people and mid middle age people, elderly people. You can see how passionate they are. So, you know, th there is such a deep divide, uh, a split in the nation, which again, you know, is, is not a good situation for us to be approaching for an election or, you know, generally in, in the nation. And the divide continues to deepen. Well, you have two forces pulling in opposite directions. You have this force X that I always like to call the New World Order, but you can call it whatever you want, deep state, whatever, that is pulling in one direction. And then you have this, what I would think is grassroots type of movement, which is pulling in the opposite direction. That's alternative media. That's simply people talking on social networks to each other. Uh, that's the alternative news, which is pulling in the opposite direction. Uh, and what you see behind you is this the result. Uh, people are not getting their information solely from one so source anymore. They're not getting it from the controlled, manipulated, in my opinion, mainstream media. They're getting it from various sources. And when they themselves see how different it is, they themselves know that something is up. You know, there was a time, now Scranton, by the way, is a heavily Democratic area. And yet you could see the support for Trump. And that's because the working and middle class no longer consider the Democrats as the champions of the working class. You know, that now they see it as a radical bunch that are more concerned about protecting minorities and, and um, uh, illegal immigrants than they are the traditional working class Americans. Now, you know, you, you could argue that point both ways that, you know, some of the attention should be paid to, uh, to people that are, are, are not uh, mainstream as much as the white middle class has been. But still, the perception among the white middle and working class is that they've been abandoned. And part of the outsourcing to China was that, but also just generally, you know, little attention being paid now to the traditional Democratic voter, which is why they crossed over. I mean, you know, it, it, Trump won Pennsylvania in 2016, even though he lost in Biden's hometown, uh, home area, the, the Lackawanna County outside of Scranton, it was close there too, but the rest of Pennsylvania, the, the, the outskirts, the, the so-called sticks, pulled him through and countered the, the support for Hillary in, um, in the big cities, uh, you know, name, namely in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. So this time, we don't know how that's gonna turn out, probably the same dynamic, but you know, there may be still more crossovers. And I, I, again, what I see developing is people are reluctant to speak out. Now that, w that was happening in 2016, people were afraid to say they were supporting Trump. That eased up for a while, but now it's returning to people afraid because of all the, 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 the rioting and all, all, the, all the social castigation, if they say that you're for Trump. So again, it's like a, a silent majority which uh, Trump has mentioned, and also which Nixon was mentioning when he was elected out of the turmoil of the, ri of, of the rioting and the protests in the 60s. And he also won as a law and order candidate. So I, I see parallels there. Well, what were you were saying in the beginning there, you're alluding to this go-to phrase where when I was approaching the voting age, I questioned my parents about like, well, what's, you know, what's the difference between Republicans, Democrats, and so forth? Uh, what I got back was the common phrase that the Democrats are for the people, they're for the working class, right. they're for the regular people, and Republicans are for the rich, and that's all the Republicans right. care about is the rich. Right. So, like, the, the information that I got was the go-to phrase that, that I think everybody got, and I think that's been changing. I think that has lost its uh, strength, and I think people are realizing that there's more opportunities than just the Democrats when it comes to the regular working class people. Well, you know, behind us on the screen here, you know, these are largely working class and middle class people. And look at the support for Trump, a Republican. And, well, this is what I'm saying. The polls kind of cannot a, be correct. And a maverick Republican at that. You know, you can't even say that Trump is a regular Republican because he's fighting his own party almost as much as he's fighting the Democrats. So again, people see that Trump is working for them despite being a rich guy from New York, but you know he's more attuned 
to how they were abandoned by the Democrats. So, you know, there, there's the support. Well, you have, uh, you know, rhino uh, uh, Republicans still within uh, his administration, even, uh, that uh, are still with the quote-unquote system that I call, again, the New yeah. World Order, you know, or whatever they may be from. But they're, they are against him, and, you know, he's got some uh, people that are working against his own it, against him in his own administration. So uh, you're seeing results of people uh, that have taken a different stance, that have taken a that have gotten their sources from elsewhere. Yeah. Well, you know, wrapping it up now, I, I just you know, I want to reiterate that uh, this was a major element of, of Biden's uh, town hall appearance right outside of his hometown. How much it was, how much support there was for Trump, and how little support there was for him. This this would have been a this should have been a major element in coverage of Biden's town hall in music right outside of Scranton. Yet little, if any, mention of it on the the regular network news. So you know that says a lot about how all this is being limited and manipulated. Well, correct. I mean, if you see uh, Trump's rallies. He, he, you know, we're talking football stadium size rallies. And when you see uh, Biden go into a rally, you see three or four people sitting in chairs, social distancing. And, and that's all basically you see. I mean, that's from what I see. I don't know what the mainstream media news is trying to present, but that's what I see. Well, I think that's uh, a session for now. And uh, once again, just to look at the video we've been running and, you know, uh, think about uh, where the deepest and most passionate support is. Uh, you know, you have it on both sides. But again, which is very, very significant here is this is supposed to be a Biden rally. Yet, you know, the Trump people are all over the place and the Biden uh, supporters are few right outside of his hometown in Scranton, Pennsylvania, which is a battleground state. That's it for now, the Rack of Rack Attack Gamer YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us, and all of you out there, thanks for joining us, and we'll keep you updated on all the uh, developments as they occur. Thanks. Good night.